I hope I have a good connection. So hello, it's me, Deborah. And I am here for our feelings check-in. It's Thursday. So hopefully I have some Wi-Fi. I do, I do, I see an eye. So that's a good sign, good sign. So thank you, thank you all for joining me today. It's our regular Thursday feelings check-in. And I've got, I think I've got a cool topic for you guys to discuss. And so welcome. I'm Deborah from the Center for Enhancing Abilities. I am out of uh, things beeping. I don't know where those beeps came from. Um, but I am out of the Bergen location. But we welcome members from all of our locations. And it's so cool when we all get together. So it's nice. So welcome, welcome. It's kind of, I don't know. Let me check out my window. Let me see. It's kind of a cloudy Thursday. Uh, not what I would say is uh, beautiful out. Hey, Jamie, good morning. Always, always sunnier, always better when you're a part of my day. So welcome, welcome, welcome. So for the, some of you who are new to this kind of uh, class or our get-together on Thursday mornings, uh, it's kind of a, a carryover from when we are at the center and usually on Thursdays is usually, I try to keep to it, um, is when we do a social skills or I, I call it really more social development type of class. It's, it's dealing with social and emotional issues that we all have to deal with and how we can interact with each other better and how we can deal with ourselves better. So I decided when we went into our social distancing mode that I would keep Thursday mornings as this day. All right. Hey, Stephanie. It, it's not as big. I was waiting for somebody to show. It's just really close. It's not a fancy mug. So I thought I'd do some forced perspective. But thank you for noticing. I'll put it down. It is kind of big. It is kind of big there. But it's a normal size mug. It's a set. You know, every every time we get together, I try to have something cool for my coffee to share with you. This one's maybe not so exciting. That's why I had to force your perspective. So that's a little bit about what we'll do today. Not forcing anything, but looking at perspective. Looking at our mindset. Hey, Hannah, I always miss you when you put comments and I never give you a shout out. So I want to give you a shout out today. I am thrilled. I actually got you today. So welcome, welcome, Hannah. And Christian, all right. Yeah, man, it is cloudy out there. Uh, you know, um, let's see. And there's another program going on today. Cool, cool. Let me see. I'm uh, sorry that you can... Uh, so good. Simon, I don't know where he is. He usually doesn't join this, uh, Thursday group because he's a little too silly. He's on spring break, but he's in the house. But thank you, Christian. I'm doing very well. It is super nice for you to ask. You always ask. You're a very considerate person. Actually, the people that I see, um, that have chimed in this morning are all very considerate people. All people that I consider myself very lucky, um, and happy and thankful that I have in my life. So it's a little bit of part of what we're going to be talking about today. So welcome, welcome. We've got Jamie. We've got Christian stopping in. We've got Hannah. I don't know if I missed somebody else already. My coffee's not working yet. And my hair. Ooh. Mm. I don't know. I'm debating whether to go back to pink. I'm kind of, this is a little dark for me. This blue, I don't know, maybe a lighter blue. I don't know. You guys can chime in and tell me. Hey, you don't know why you can't hear me. Can you guys hear me? Somebody let me know if you can hear me. Um, it may have something more to do with the volume of your phone. Or if you can't hear me, I guess it doesn't really matter. There's a little button on your phone um, that you might want to click on the corner. If you're not clicking onto it, 
it's like a, I don't know. I, don't, I think it looks like that. It's like a, a thing on the side. But play around with the app. See if you can hear me. But if anybody cannot hear me, let me know. Let me know. So welcome. It is our Thursday social group and crazy hair day. And my lighting is bad, I know. I'm in my office today to reach out to you uh, because I thought it would be good. I have my board of things we want to talk about. And um, we're going to continue on this dealing with our situation. So a lot of our Thursday groups really focus on our current situation of social distancing, um, you know, we're reading that some people are not well or they get sick. Everybody's very nervous. Uh, there's long lines at the food store. There's no toilet paper. It's mass hysteria, right? So we're going to use our Thursdays for a little bit longer to kind of process these feelings that we're having and talking about how we can better you know, better handle ourselves or, you know, different ways to think so that we can better handle the situation. All right. So I had seen on Facebook a very cool, um, um, I don't want to say it was a poster or a meme or a picture, but it really talked about, um, you know, what kind of mindset Okay, that you want to have during this situation. I think this can apply to anything because while I don't wish bad things to happen, this won't be the last challenging situation we'll have. There will always be something difficult, maybe not as weird or difficult as this, maybe something that's easier. Um, I, th I see Kara's coming on. So life always has these kinds of ups and downs. So if it's not coronavirus, or I guess if you're cool, you call it the Rona, um, or if you're very intellectual, COVID-19, um, this isn't going to be the only time we're going to have something challenging. So this is a good way to set up mindsets uh, to deal with tough situations. They could be personal situations. It could be something happening in your own life that maybe other people aren't experiencing, or it could be just like now this is worldwide. It could be just center specific, right? Could be company specific, all our centers, which this is, or it could be center specific. It could be just an issue that's affecting uh, members at the Edison Center, but not members at the Bergen Center. So, we all have different times in our lives where we have some challenges and sometimes we share them and hopefully we always have people we can share our feelings and our difficulties and go to for help. But sometimes different things happen that affect different people. But right now we're all affected by this. I can't think of anybody who's not. So for our feelings check in, definitely chime in. Tell me how you're doing today. Tell me how you're feeling, and I'll share it with others. And we're going to get started um, talking about different mindsets, meaning different points of view, different ways to look at something, okay? So, for example, the ones we're going to work on are four. We're going to talk about fear-based, or if you're in the fear zone, Learning, you're in the learning zone. Growth, you're in the growth zone. And we'll open it up for discussion if you're in the action zone. So there's, there's different kinds of mindsets, meaning where are you in your head? Where are you thinking? Where are you coming from? So for example, Stephanie, very smartly so, I'm going to put it back, she looked and she saw that this was very big because it's really close to the camera, right? She goes, that is one big mug, which I do have really big mugs. I'll have to bring them out. So that's her mindset. That's her vision. That's what she's seeing. 
and what she sees definitely is also affecting how she responds to the situation. And then I showed her, I changed the mindset, I changed the perspective. I said, it's really not that big of a mug. It's just a little boring mug that I wanted to make it look much more interesting to you. See? See? So we're going to talk about mindset. How we see things. Um, and that affects how we act to situations. So we're going to see where we are. We're going to see where we are. And that's why I've got some different words up. So if you can, I don't know if I can see. Good. I know, Katie. Good morning. It is a gloomy day. I don't know if it was raining. I heard like weird noises. Now I got garbage trucks. So it's, it's a gloomy day. But you know what? Maybe it'll be a good day. Just because the weather is gloomy doesn't mean that our day is going to be gloomy. So maybe we can work that into our perspective, our mindset. But yeah, how it looks outside can definitely change our perspective, right? Right? You know? So whether it's big or small, how we see things. So if you see a word... As I'm moving around, Oreo's sleeping somewhere. Um, but if you see a word that is interesting to you um, and you want to say, what is going on, Deborah? Give me a shout out. Tell me how you're doing. Tell me how you're feeling. And I'll address it during our discussion. So we talked about um, different um, mindsets, different, different states of mind, okay? And we're going to look at it from this situation, you know, how, how, what, what state of mind am I looking from of life and coronavirus and where do I want to be? Where should I be in terms of my thinking? So this is highfalutin stuff today. All right. So the first area that we tend to start out in any time there is a difficult uh, situation or a scary situation, is we're more in the fear zone, right? That's what happens. So you're going to find that the other classes and handouts I've sent, they're going to play into this. So we're like building. We're like building steps to take us to some great place great. So when this all started, we were like, what? Uh, first of all, I was like, you know, we, some of us made fun of it, like, oh, this is, this is a joke. You can't be serious. And then when we started to see that it was a real situation, we got scared, right? So when you're in a fear zone, you're kind of your, your, your basic instincts. Hey, Terrence, your basic instincts kind of jump in, right? We're like, what? Because that makes, that's normal. It's normal to be scared. Um, because that's how we protect ourselves. I mean, fear is not, uh, is not a bad thing necessarily. It's a, it's a survival tool. So let me know if anybody, when this first started, you were very scared or you were fearful or tell me now if you're still feeling feelings of being afraid or, you know, being fearful, it's okay. Share it, share it with us. So when we're in this fearful zone, right? This mindset, and that's the only mindset we see things, you know, that's when that leads people to, you know, who here has done this? You run to the store and you got to stock up on, you know, all this stuff and toilet paper. Even I did that. I think I did that one night before this all really hit the fan. I went and I got a big cart of food, right? Um, or we, we, we express anger, um, or we have tantrums. Let's see. Caitlin says, I didn't get scared because I treated this like I was recuperating. Okay. So Caitlin, we're going to find you on a different part of this, um, this mindset spectrum. Okay. That's great. So Caitlin tapped into previous experiences. She had surgery. She volunteered and she must have had some time that she had to recoup. She had to slow down. So she's using that. So that's a great example. But for some of us, if we reacted in a fear state, we're the people that ran to the store. Okay. Um, if we really, we just, we just get angry and we're really scared and we have tantrums. 
right? Which is okay. I think I just had one last night. My son's room was a mess. It's a mess. Um, cause we might be going back and forth from these mindsets. Complain a lot. Well, that's me all the time. I, if people know me, I I'm a complainer. I, you know, uh, if I don't complain, then I'm not living, <laughs> but we complain a lot. We look for the worst in everything, right? Now it's okay for us to comment about that we're disappointed in the weather today, but if everything, you know, even if we had a nice day or, or we can't find anything good, complaining is kind of contagious, kind of brings everybody else down. I do admit that. Um, maybe we're avoiding things. We're avoiding work, right? You're avoiding texts. I say this sometimes to my staff, you're avoiding text or messages. You're not responding to your boss because you're scared. You don't know it's unknown to you. Um, or you get, you get really, you know, agitated and angry very easily. These are things that put us in that fear zone. That's what's showing us where we're really coming from a point that we're letting the uncertainty from last week, we're letting the things that we don't know get to us and, and take over all our thoughts and all our actions. So I admit, yeah, yeah, sometimes I'm there. Oh, I don't have the negative words, if you notice. I don't have any negative words. Sometimes I'm there. I've been there, right? But do we want to stay there? Who thinks? Who thinks we should stay in that zone? Anybody? Anybody? Do you think it feels good to be in that zone? That's really the key. Do you think it feels good? I don't think so. I think that's one of the problems. That's why we want to learn to move maybe into another mindset, right? See things. So like Stephanie, she gave such a great example. She saw this huge mug. It might be very scary. Or she might get excited because might, she might think it's filled with loads of coffee. But it's big. It's, it's overwhelming. But if we change our mindset, we change our perspective, we realize, okay, this is something I can handle. So it might help us feel better. It might help us feel better. And as we move forward, like I said, I don't know how visible they are. If you see words here that are going to help us get to these other stages, let me know. Uh, yes. In the beginning, I was scared. This is Katie because my grandparents were far away. Yeah. Katie, very, um, we can get very scared and that we're not near the people that we care about or that we love or that we worried about. So it's nice. I mean, that's a positive thing to think about who we're with. Okay. And we can be, gra and, and that's going to be in here. That's going to be in this. So yeah, it's hard. Uh, optical illusions can be very misleading. Caitlin said, absolutely. Absolutely. That's why we need to look at our mindset. We need to look at what is our perspective? How are we seeing things? And the way that our mind is affected is our emotions. These pesky emotions It's part of being human. Like I said, it's okay to be afraid. Katie had a really good reason why she was fearful. That makes a lot of sense. I'm fearful too, you know, for like other people um, that I care about that aren't near me and that are, you know, very old or, you know, have health issues. I worry about them. That, that makes me scared. Um, so it's not saying that these things are bad. These are normal feelings. But if we let this take over and we can't find other ways to change our thought patterns, we'll be stuck. We'll be stuck in that fear zone. So I like how Katie put it in a past tense. I was fearful. That's good. That's good. I was. Okay. Doesn't mean she won't be. Right? At least something else crazy going on. No garbage delivery, a pickup. I got neighbors freaking out because of recyclables and stuff. Oh, I get it. Who wants all those smelly things? Um, so that's our fear zone when we're stuck in that. Okay. So let's move on. So now we've had a little bit of time. Okay. We figured things out a little bit. We all found each other. Let's take a learning 
perspective now. Now we're going to come forth, like, how can I have a learning mindset? What do you think that means to you? What do you think that means? I'm using a lot of big fancy words and stuff like that. Um, so if you're confused by anything or you miss something, you know, just chime in. I've got a few people. I don't see, I don't see some of my regular people that I'm, you must be here. Chime in so I can say hello. Uh, usually you say hi. So please let me know and tell me how you're feeling today. That's part of this. So we're talking about different stages, different mindsets of how we're going to handle this situation. So now we're moving into a learning mindset, okay? Meaning, as we deal with this situation, we look at ways to learn and improve ourselves or our responses or our choices. So instead of when we're stuck in fear, right? All we're going to do is just keep running to the food store and buying toilet paper and freaking out when it's not there. If you're moving to your learning mindset, you're going to start to think like, you know, that's really not working out running to the food store and they don't have any toilet paper. I got to figure out other ways that I can get my TP. That's a learning mindset. And do I really need to panic? How much toilet paper do I have? I'm sorry, I just enjoy any type of thing that I can refu refu uh, um, refer to uh, toilet paper. Just makes me giggle. So let's talk about this learning mindset. Now, some things in here are things we've talked about. Uh, like a focused mind intending on learning. Yes, Caitlin, exactly. This is, we're starting to focus our thoughts. When we're in fear... Our, our brains and our thoughts are like going in different directions or they're only on one direction, right? How do I get out of here? Where's the nearest exit? Natural. That's survival. Okay? We, we got to protect ourselves. But now let's, let's take a step up. We're going to take a step up. So let's go to learning. And the number one thing they recommend is you stop. Um, you, you stop focusing on the things you can't control. We talked about this a lot. Easier said than done. So, so we were saying yesterday in our Zoom, we're stuck. We're stuck. We're stuck in our homes a little bit. Okay? We're not going to the movies. We're not going to the center. We're not really going to our jobs. Um, we're, we're stuck. And there's really nothing we can do about that. And it seems to be working. That's important. So... Um, don't tell the group. Okay. All right. Um, then I wouldn't post those things if you don't want people to know. People read. People read. Okay. So, um, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Um, and if, um, that individual needs to contact me and set up a Zoom, we can. We can do that. But, um, just so you know, if there's things that you don't want, pe people can read. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's, that's part of this. That's why we're focusing on this because we're going to hear stories about people who are going to get sick and who are going to deal with a lot of sad, sadness, just dealing with the illness or other things. We have, um, you know, people who have gone to the nursing home, um, the veterans home in Paramus, uh, our center, some of our members have taken a part of that. Um, they're on shutdown, and they're dealing with a lot of problems over there. Some really sad stories. But ultimately, we're going to get through this, and we're going to be stronger for it. That's why we need to think of our mindset, our mindset. So, learning. First thing is we give up on what we can't, what we can't control. So now we know we're stuck. We know the situation. We know we're going to hear some bad news. And, but we're not going to worry about that. You know, you say, Deborah, that's really easy for you to say. Because I, I, it's not. I'm a control freak. I like to control everything. Okay? I try to control what you see, what you hear. I can't control my hair. It's driving me nuts. But it's really probably the best advice anybody can give you. Because the things that we can't control, why are we wasting our energy on worrying about them? Why? You're not going to change it. 
when you focus on the things you can control, you can improve your life greatly. So you can't control leaving the house, really. I mean, unless for a walk or going for a car ride. But you can't go to the center because you don't know the code. <laughs> uh, and I won't be there. But you can control how you access center programming. That you can control. You may not want to get up at 10.30 in the morning, but you can if you set an alarm. Or you can go to YouTube and look at it afterwards. These are things you can control that will help you. As Caitlin said, you start to focus the mind, right? On learning, focusing on what you can control. So this you can, right? You can control whether or not you're going to do an art project. I mean, I'm not coming to your house and making you do it unless you really want me to. I guess I could put a whole hazmat suit on. But you can control that. And that's what you should focus on. Things you can change. Um, another thing as we move into this learning mindset, stop obsessing over stuff that brings you down. This is hard for me. I'm a news junkie. We've talked about this, right? I'm a news junkie, so I love to watch the news. I go on, is anybody, Caitlin, I wonder um, if you do this. Katie, don't, don't, it'll depress you. Live day by day, make the best of things. Absolutely. Katie, you are on this chart somewhere, and you are not in the fear zone. You have moved out. You are moving out, and that's the way we want you to be. We want you to move from this, this first stage, and I want you to, to grow and blossom, like open, like a rainbow, like a flower. Absolutely. Day to day and make the best of what you can. Absolutely. Good advice. Um, and that goes into, you know, not being obsessive um, over like the bad news. Um, as I said, I'm a news junkie. I, I love to do it. I go on worldometers.com. <laughs> when this first started, I was going on like every 15 minutes. It gives you, uh, it started, I think, for, it has like different information on population growth um, for the world and could go by countries, and then they, they, I guess they get a lot of hits now for um, the coronavirus. And you can go in and you can see tables and, ch and you can see charts and graphs and numbers of who, you know, how many cases and who's recovering and the number of deaths and, and those types of things from, from overall on a daily basis. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that to yourself? Hopefully you get bored and you move on to something else. But if we focus on the things that kind of bring us down, we're not making the best of things, as Katie said. So we, we start to leave that away. We start to not focus on, on the news. That's going to fuel the fear in our heads. So we want to move away from the fear mindset. We're moving now to a different area, different, different area development. So if you're joining us in late, we're here for our Thursday Feelings check-in. And our social topic of the day is what kind of mindset? Where, does, where do I want my head? What kind of mindset do I want to deal with this challenging situation? And it will work for all different situations. So I've got different people on. I've got some really smart people giving me some good advice. So scroll down in those comments. Give me a shout out. The other one is, we talked about this, as we're in our learning mindset, we're preparing ourselves to learn from the situation, we want to identify our emotions. That's really important. Um, when you're in the fear mindset and you're afraid, I told you, right, we're working with those, those basic instincts. Ah, there's a tiger coming. I'm going to be eaten. We run. But when we start to get past that, and we want to learn from a situation, we start to identify our emotions. I don't know why, but some people just torture themselves, as Kate says. Uh, I'm not saying, I listen, you're, you're pretty close to perfect. You're a pretty smart person. But you're right. Some people do it because they're stuck in that mindset. That's all where they want to be. And it's hard to leave that because sometimes it's easier to do that, right? It's easier to run to the food store. I mean, maybe. And stock up on toilet paper, because then you feel safe. If I have all the toilet paper <laughs> in Bergen County or, or wherever, whatever county, in Burlington County, I'm going to be safe. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think so. It's harder 
to start to look and become more self-aware and realize that every situation is different positives and negatives. And that makes us feel nervous and uncertain. So, but we got to identify our emotions, right? We got to look at how we're feeling. And it's okay to be angry, to be frustrated. Put some feelings in for me. Put them in the comments. Tell me. They could be up, they could be up emotions and they could be down emotions, right? None are good or bad. It, this is human. They're all normal feelings, okay? And it, that's all okay. So you might be frustrated. You might be angry. You might be disappointed. Um, my one friend at the center, we always find these great words for different emotions, right? My one friend, David, uh, surprised. <laughs> you might be. <laughs> uh, all these different um, emotions. You might be happy. You might be happy to spend like Katie's um, gets to spend some time with her grandparents. I think that's wonderful. Think of those wonderful memories um, that you're building. <laughs> you might get tired after a while. I, I do realize that, but I've had some really good feelings, some good times with my family and sometimes some bad. So it's a roller coaster, right? Some good feelings, some bad feelings. Share what you're feeling. Tell me. Share the bad ones. Share the good ones. Or we shouldn't say that, right? We said we share the up ones, share the down ones. Up meaning, you know, we're, you know, we're feeling, we're moving in an upward direction, a positive direction. Down feelings, we're kind of getting down in the dumps. That's what we, we're talking about. They're not good or bad. So it's a good thing I corrected myself. So share your feelings. Um, but it's good to say them. Even if you say them out loud to yourself, or share them with other people, right? We need validation, meaning we need other people to say, yeah, I, I get it. When Katie, I'm going to use her example, said she was fearful when she started, yeah. I'm glad she told me. I hope that makes her feel better that she shared it. She got it off her chest. And she should know that she's not alone in that. Absolutely. I was too. And it's okay for you to fear fear to feel fearful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so identify your emotions. Um, you know, we become another part is we become aware of the situation when we're in the learning. That's what we were just talking about a few seconds ago, right? And how to react. So when Caitlin was saying, I don't get people that just you know, they're always on the news, which I, I hear you where they're, they're, you know, kind of feeding into that negativity. Um, maybe because they're not really totally aware of the whole situation and they're kind of stuck. So we may be stuck inside, but we're not stuck in our head. So we can start to get information and look at our situation and then that'll help us make decisions on how we're going to react. So instead of when we run out of, um, I'll give one for me, sugar. I ran out of sugar. I thought of ways, I said, okay, let's put it in perspective. It's not the end of the world. I can't bake. Maybe there's other things I can use in my house. And I calmed down. Okay, I said, okay, this is, I'm not going to lose it. There's been other things I've lost it. <laughs> but we need to be aware and being aware is the first thing, hopefully, for everyone here, is that you're safe, you are well, and you have a support system. You have people around you to help you. And if you have that, then we can kind of relax a little bit and not panic, right? The other thing is we want to make sure our info is correct, right? Evaluate stuff you hear before you start letting people know. Right? Um, that I think happens a lot. Let me know if anybody's heard this, like um, with the schools, oh, they're closed for like a year and a half. Let's all relax. That's not what the governor said. Um, everybody flipping out over, um, I understand why they're upset, but how it transmits, um, you know, is it on your app? I don't know. I mean, I might be more concerned about there's some pictures of some guy going around stealing <laughs> your packages. But find out your information first, you know? Talk. Say, is this really true? 
Is this, is this what's going on? Before you just start sharing it. But we all do that. That's human nature. You know, a friend of a friend of a friend who's married to my cousin told me this. It's part of it. But as we're learning, we want to look at our sources. We want to see, make sure our information is correct. And um, let's see. Uh, another thing that's really important on my notes. Let's cut everybody some slack. That's hard to do. We have to realize that everybody's really trying the best that they can. And that's easy to forget. I do that probably on a daily basis 20 million times. But it's true. Some of us are better at dealing with certain types of strengths and different weaknesses or challenges. How about that? So we're all just trying to do our best. And that's more of a, a, a learning mindset. So I have some people that always comment about all the long lines at the food store. And they're like, this is terrible. This is terrible. These people are nuts. Well, I have to look at it and start to understand why are they doing that? They're afraid. Or maybe they need food just like me. And they're just trying to feed themselves and their family. They're just they're just doing the best they can. So that's a biggie, all right, that we've got to learn. So we started in fear. And a lot of you guys um, here today, maybe because you've been watching all my um, social skills groups, probably not. Uh, maybe you're eating breakfast or doing the laundry. I don't know. But we went from fear. That's where we start. And hopefully we move out of that. Right? Instead of just reacting to everything, now we moved to the learning zone, right? And we start to realize, wait a minute, I've got to look at this situation a little bit differently so I can make some better choices and it might make me feel better. Then we move to um, the growth zone. Let's move to the growth zone. Where now we're not just learning basics, we're really starting to make real changes we're really starting to do stuff we're you know we're really we're really taking what we've learned oh oh one thing and i know a lot of you've been doing this is we start to think of others and how we can help them that's a biggie so i have friends that have delivered uh, food to people, people have exchanged. They're thinking like, you know, hey, everybody does a Facebook check-in. That's a wonderful way um, to think about, there's other people out there and they might need my help. How, how could I help them? Um, make the best of your talents. You guys are super This is a good time. You know, what are my talents and how can I make them available to other people? This is a real thinking stage. This is a really creative stage. Live in the here and now. Katie said it. I toast her. Day to day. Don't focus on, I don't know what's going to happen in December. I have a feeling we're all going to be sitting around, I don't know, Christmas trees and menorahs or whatever else you put in your house sharing gifts. I can't, I can't worry about that. I got to worry about today. Right? Right here and now. Me sitting here with you, having my really now cold cup of coffee. The here and now. That's all we got past is past. Okay. Maybe I, maybe I wasn't the best person, right? I didn't really act the best way or I threw a lot of tantrums. That would be me. I can't beat myself up over that. All right. Now I got to learn and here and now, how can I make changes so that I don't do that? Right. And make life a living hell in my house. Right. Um, empathy, right? Does it, I think we've got it here. Okay, if you see some words, I've got empathy. I don't know if I personally have it, but empathy is really seeing, you know, feeling and seeing things from another person's perspective. And, and it, that leads to compassion being and kindness. So why somebody's really having a hard time with something that maybe you don't, we gotta think like, you know, it must be tough for that person. I can kind of see that. I can understand that. I may not know exactly what he or she is going through, but I can imagine. I could, I can imagine how they're feeling, but not just for 
other people for yourself too. We've got to, got to be kind to ourselves and to other people. Okay. And understanding once we realize that people are just doing the best they can, as we move into the growth mind sp mindset, we can start to have empathy for them. So instead of getting angry at them for running and getting 50 rolls of toilet paper, we can start to say, wow, that person must be really scared. Maybe something happened in their lives that they ran out of toilet paper. And it was a difficult situation when they did. We got to think about why. Why is somebody reacting or acting in a way? That is growth mindset. That's your, you're growing as a person. Um, gratitude. Right? Thankfulness. I got it up here. Let's see. Right here. Be grateful. Katie said that. Other people said that. I think Caitlin alluded to that as well. Be grateful for what you have, right? <laughs> Sometimes we wish it was more, yeah. But if, what did we say? We're safe, we're well, we're healthy, and we have people around to help us and support us. Those are good things. If you've got that, you've got a lot going for you, okay? There are some people in this world that don't right now. So we've got each other. I might not be in your house, which would be weird. <laughs> um, but we have each other. We have our friends. We have technology. My goodness. We've got our brains. We've got coffee. And if you're like me, I've got plenty of toilet paper. So we want to be grateful. And that will help us. So when we get angry, when we're swinging back to that fear mindset, right? It's like a pendulum. We got to stop and say, okay, wait a minute. What do I have in my life that's good? That makes me feel good. All right. I've got 50 rolls of toilet paper. I'm okay. I'm okay. So it'll help us. Swing us back. Swing us in the positive direction. Um, you know, one of the things that people recommend when you start to get into this growth mindset, when you're really looking at why things are happening, how can I improve on things, you know, having a positive, um, emotional state, having a positive attitude. Let's see, where is he? He's over here. Having a positive attitude is really helpful. And I think as you start to understand when you've really worked in that learning stage and you understand these things, it does help you. You can find the positive things. Katie said it, make the best of things. She's in that growth mindset. She's moving in there, right? Awesome. We can look at how we meet new challenges in this stage. That's what this is really about. Be creative, be creative right? Instead of always looking at it like, oh, this is terrible. How can we look at it? All right. This kind of stinks. But what can I do to make something really cool out of it? Remember, use those talents. Use those talents that you all have. You have many. Many, many. That's an hour in itself. Okay? Take some time in our growth, st in our growth stage, our growth mindset. Take some time to be quiet, to have a little bit of... We're watching Superman movies, so have your fortress of solitude. Just take a little bit of time to yourself, because right now we're kind of all stuck with each other. But that'll help you think, give you time to think. We need quiet. We need to break out of the noise. So turn off the news, maybe turn off YouTube, chatter. Just take a moment, even if it's, even if it's a minute. I'll help you with your growth stage your growth mindset. Now, I need your help. I don't know who we got left. We got some. I see some. We got a good number. We're going to move into action, right? We started with fear. Okay. We found out what was happening. Going into social distancing, there is um, a health concern and we were afraid. And some people just stayed there. Some people are just still in that spot, sitting in a corner, trying to hide, hiding their toilet paper, getting angry at everybody. We got to move. So we move from our fear 
to our learning, where we really started to find out what's going on. What is this? And figure out ways, um, you know, taking note of how we're feeling and what's really happening around us. And then we moved into growth. Hopefully, I know a lot of you have. Whoops. Here we are. Now we're thinking about what we learned and how we're going to use that to make change, to do things that can make this a better situation. And now it's action. Action is actually doing something. So I want to know if you guys have your fingers handy to type or whatever. What do you think are some actions? What are some things you can do to help you through this situation? So you've worked on this. You've had all this development. I've seen so many of you do this, do this process, have this development. I'm so proud and impressed with so many of you, with all of you that are on here today. Uh, as Katie said, we're making the best of the situation. That means you're going through this process. How smart you are. Um... Now I want to know, what can we do? Or what if things you've already been done? Now, I have this crazy list where, you know, people really <clears throat> have some wild things that they could do. I want to I wanna make it like really, what are some practical things? What are some things we actually can do? What's action for you? So I'll give you an example. Um, that your centers, your teachers have done. They took action. So we all started in fear. Oh no, center closed. Oh my God, what am I going to do? That's my job. I'm not going to see my friends and my students. And then we moved out of that and we said, okay, well, now I got to think about, you know, well, how long is this going to happen? Where is the center going to close? And we've got all that information. And then it, took us, we started to process that, we took it to growth, and we said, okay, all righty, who needs my help, and what are some ways that I can help them? And the action is when your instructors, for example, started to do this. We sent emails, maybe we set up Google Classroom, we have classes on Zoom and YouTube and Facebook. That's action. We took a problem, we identified the problem, and we controlled our feelings, and then we looked at what can we do, what skills do we have that might help some people that need our help, and then we made a plan, and we did it. So I want to know what are some actions that you could do? What are some things that you've been doing, people you know? things you'd like to try. I want to know from you guys. And if you come in afterwards, after the live video, you can go into the comments and write it down too. I do read it. I do read it. I'll share some things that I think you guys have done. That's action. Um, you guys is, uh, you guys, you guys, um, many of you have taken advantage of the classes themselves and the projects. You might say, well, you know, no big deal, Deborah. I was bored out of my mind, so I might as well do something. Actually, there was more to it than just that. You showed support. We needed help. Your teachers needed your help. And you showed support. And you rose to the challenge and you said, okay, I'm gonna take that class. I'm gonna sign in. I'm gonna put some comments for Deborah to read. I'm gonna show her I'm here. I'm here for the class. I'm here for the, the center. I'm here for my friends. That's action. See, I don't know if you knew you was that good, huh? See? Some of you, um, took part of a rainbow challenge, right? Someone else had a cool idea, shared it with other people. Some of you said, you know what? That sounds like a good idea. I think I can do that. I'm pretty confident 
in my skills, okay, all three, all our classes, all melding together, right? Um, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a rainbow painting to put in my window. Or I'm going to paint this awesome uh, painted rock. And I'm going to put it in my front yard. So as people walking their dogs or pushing baby strollers or my postman or postwoman, I guess postal carrier, will see it. And maybe it'll bring a smile on their face. That's action. You're having, you're doing something that has an effect and a positive one. We really want positive effect on others. That's really important. You guys are real quiet today. What do you think? Give me some more examples. Check in. Tell me how you're feeling before we sign off. It's okay to share something. I mean, as long as you're comfortable with sharing it. Um, if, if you're still having some of those initial stage feelings, the down feelings... Tell us something that you've done that you felt proud about. That's important. Action. Action. So let's see some more ideas. Let's see some more ideas that you can do. Action. So some people supported local stores and restaurants by getting takeout. That's a risk because some people may not always know where their next paycheck is going to be or their concerns. Or they, during times like this, people try to save money. So you could cook at home for a lot cheaper. Um, but we, we, we use local takeout to keep those businesses going. Newton's third law does state for every action, there's an equal positive and equal negative reactions. So yes, yes. Um, but in our world, for enacting um, socially with each other, supportively for each other, I do think we can control the, the effect of the action, the outcome. And I do think... For us, in this situation, we can control for a positive or a negative. Absolute comments as well. And we want to control for positive. We want more positive impact than negative. I know for science and physics and all that stuff, yeah. Um, the negative might be that you're reducing hardship for others. So positive would be adding to something, negative would be taking away. So you could even argue on your element, your, your thought, that even if it appears to be positive, the negative impact is that we are taking away from the suffering of others, which just so happens to be a positive thing. But so we're adding and we're taking away. So excellent, excellent. We need, we need to have like advanced, we need philosophy. Anybody want to do a philosophy class on Zoom? chime in tell me if that's what you're for we could do philosophy i would love that that would be awesome or maybe our lunch bunch group philosophy class i did not do very well in philosophy <laughs> i didn't mean professor in one class he was mean to me he yelled at me uh kara gave what kara gave you some toilet paper you were unable to find it in the store and kara your friend gave you some tp Kara took action. And you know what? So did you. You took action as well. You said, whoa, I'm low on TP. You didn't run crazy. You stayed calm. You reached out for help. And you got some TP. You both took action. Love it. And I especially love it. You get extra points because you, you kept the TP reference going. I love that. You know, I'm like a a third grader. I love bathroom humor. So always gets me every time. Um, so um, supporting local businesses, right? What those two friends did, they supported each other. They filled different needs for each other. So supporting friends by bartering. So Kara, <laughs> and usually we do it at the kindness of our heart, but Kara gave toilet paper to, to Jamie. 
Now everybody knows their personal story. Caitlin. Yeah, I guess I know you've been bored. We all have. So Caitlin, I know we're going to I'm going to put it in. I'm going to put it in the schedule. So keep an eye out. And if it's if it's a conflict with another class you want, you just let me know. OK, and I'll, I'll kind of reschedule it because um, I don't want people to make tough choices. But yeah, bartering, bartering with friends. So I had a friend that had too much peanut butter. And I, you know, peanut butter goes pretty fast in my house. And it's very well appreciated. Um, and it could make a difference between a good day and a bad day. And I said, hey, if you've got extras and you're okay to give it to me, if somebody else doesn't eat, I'll give you a mask. And it worked. I think she got, I got the better end of the deal with the, with the peanut butter. So supporting local businesses, supporting friends, doing exchanges with families, feeding the poor and the needy. A lot of food pantries, um, are, um, and a lot of people have lost their jobs or they're on unemployment. So think of ways that you can maybe donate some food. That's all. Do it now. Maybe when this is over and we get back, because this is a big uh, thing for our center is about dealing with um, hunger. I haven't forgotten about that. Um, you can do a food drive afterwards to replenish food pantries, like Meals on Wheels. They need people to, to deliver food. They're having a problem. So some people are volunteering in safe ways, right? You know, teaching friends. Maybe you do your own, you have a special talent, you know? A lot of you guys are really good at art or reading. Maybe you go on Zoom and you read for one of your friends that has a heart. Teaching others is a great way to take action. Taking care of people who are sick, whether it's coronavirus. <laughs> I'm going to give you a, you know, a warning on this. I don't want you to leave your house and, and go to the hospital. Um, your job, because you're not a doctor or a nurse, or maybe you are, and thank you if that's your case, or you're a, cert uh, um, a healthcare um, tech, uh, that's different. They're definitely taking action. But for the rest of us, maybe we have family members at home. We can do it safely might not even it's not there's other things some people get cold some people have allergies some people have stomach bugs some people just feel bad they feel dead. being there supporting them right supporting your families right um you know teaching others to you know or sharing i guess teaching others a new um a, a new topic a new skill Okay, we were talking about teaching. Um, maybe there's a special talent you have that you want to introduce to people, right? Those are all things you can do, that, that you can do action. You can do food drives. You can <clears throat> maybe help your family cook some leftovers or to make like things so you could put in the freezer. Uh, you can help them get ready um for the easter holiday because it's going to be different um maybe you can make cards for people um in hospitals or for your friends or for um first responders or make a sign for um people that are working in grocery stores these are all things you can take action on as you've worked through this process. And here's all these words that we've got, right? Care, care about other people. Care for yourself, learn, right? That was one of our things. Learn something, learn something new. Learn how you feel. What a grow. That was one of our words in here. Grow as a person. This is an opportunity for you to grow. We said it, look for the positive. You can grow. You're gonna be amazed at the things you can do. What else? Help. <laughs> Help me, help me. Now, um, it's not a cry for help, but it is to help others, but it's also to know when you need help from others as well. It's okay. It's okay to ask for help. That's actually a learning and a growth is to know when you need help. Okay? People in fear don't always know it, or they don't know how to ask. So there's that. Love. Always, always try to come from an area of love, give thanks, think here now, and empathy. So 
I think we're good. I think we did our class for the hour. Um, I hope some of you, or all of you, I hope all of you got a little something out of it. I will once again make, um, you can share it. And what I'm hoping that you take all these handouts that I do and I email them to families. And if you don't get the email, you're going to email me at CEA2 Bergen at gmail.com. So it's C is in cat, E is in eagle, A is in apple, the number two. B E R G E N at gmail.com. I can put you on our email list. Um, and the idea is you should, you can print these out each week and you can sit there and talk about it with your family. That's a way to take action. Sit down and say, Hey, this is what I got in my class. Let's talk about it. What do you think? So it's a cool way to do things. I want everyone to have a wonderful day. You will not see me for art today. Uh, I will post materials, I guess, uh, for you guys, but Allison will be teaching art today. Exciting, right? Yeah, I know you guys get bored to see my ugly face. So we're going to have that today, art. I know there's other things going on um, at other places. We've got a new lesson on Google Classroom for all of you as well. There's lots of cool stuff to do there. Go in and look at it. Check out our YouTube channel. Always stuff going on there. Um, there is the task of the day, uh, which is um, how jelly beans are made. I bet you didn't know. I didn't. An Easter-esque theme. Go in, take a look. Please send me pictures of your artwork. Post them. Send them what you're doing. Um, I love to see it. It makes my day to see that. So, all of you, we are imperfect beings on this imperfect path doing truly amazing imperfect things if you really think about it so i hope you will continue to work with me as we work through all of these stages so we can um make good choices and have happy days more happy days than down days right so if you need me you guys know what to do put a comment in there send me a message on facebook and i wish you a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you all tomorrow on Friday. It's a wild card day. I don't even know what we're doing. Oh, I'm so glad, Jamie. Thank you so much. I, I enjoy, like, if there's things, if you guys give me feedback and there's things that you want to talk about or have me focus on or cover, please let me know. I do take that into consideration. It's very important to me. So, um, helps me help you. We all help each other. So everyone, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for joining me for our feelings check-in. And tomorrow it will be a wild card day in the morning. Lunch bunch at 1230. And we end the day always on a high note. 230. It's music with Tony. That's the way you got to end your week. That's the way we like it. Check in on Google Classroom and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone.